I am explaining the second chapter, the adventures of Toto. Yes, in this chapter, have have you ever uh, had a baby monkey as a pet? This question is asked for. Toto is actually a baby monkey. Let's find out whether he is mischievous or docile. This means whether he is very very naughty or simple, surrendering creature. So, in this chapter, the narrator is Ruskin Bond. who is very very fond of keeping animals narrator's grandfather was animal lover he established in this chapter it is given one special private zoo so he bought by chance one baby monkey from a tanga driver and named it toto the narrator's grandmother did not like at all any kinds of pets so toto's presence was kept a secret yes then it was kept in a little closet which opened into the narrator's room this is given toto did so many mischievous activities yes it tore off author's school blazer he peeled off the plaster of the home then toto was kept with other animals there he did not allow them to live peacefully the grandfather had to collect his pension from saharanpur by chance he had to go there so he had no other uh, support to keep that creature that's why he had to take toto with him now snice journey starts he had to pay extra fare for toto toto was ultimately accepted by the family he was put into a stable with nana the family donkey toto teased nana toto nana never became friends once toto nearly boiled himself alive this is also given he used to take bath in warm water one day a large kitchen kettle had been left on fire to boil for tea toto raised himself it was cold outside he sat down again he continued jumping up and down till the grandmother came to save him then toto did not give up any mischief rather he went on doing one thing or another he tore things to pieces he tore up the dresses of the aunt who used to come in the home of the narrator he broke many plates many utensils one day he entered the dining room and ran out with a plate of pulao he threw the plate at the grandmother this was more than enough for the family members toto caused such a great chaos to the family so the grandfather started feeling it was not nice to keep him they could not tolerate him any more that's why in upset mood the grandfather sold toto back to the tonga driver and then he felt relieved yes now it gives one nice message about keeping pets if we are comfortable if we can give proper love affection space to one animal only then we should try to keep it one nice lesson is given if we are unable to keep them then we should never try to force any kind of mentality or exploitation on these kinds of creatures now think about it first question how does toto come to grandfather's private zoo yes it was by chance grandfather loved animals by chance one day he saw this attractive baby monkey with a tonga driver the monkey was tied to a feeding trough and seemed out of place there means it was not looking nice there so grandfather had a special fondness for animals that's why he decided that he can afford that and he took that and bought it for 5 rupees from that tonga driver now second question toto was a pretty monkey in what sense is toto pretty toto had bright sparkling eyes with mischief pearly white teeth quick and wicked fingers a gracious tail which served as a third hand for toto the smile of toto was very nice and he used to frighten elderly anglo indian ladies so in these ways it was looking pretty now third question why does grandfather take toto to saharanpur and how why does the ticket collector insist on calling toto a dog 
Toto was really very naughty monkey. He kept disturbing all other animals in grandfather's private zoo. That's why it was not possible for the grandfather to leave him. So he had to take him to Saharanpur in a black bag. The ticket collector called Toto a dog because he cannot take a train fare from a monkey as there is no special category of taking ticket from monkeys. That's why he went on insisting that it was one dog. Now, fourth question, how does Toto take a bath? Where has he learned to do this? How does Toto almost boil himself alive? Toto cunningly tested the temperature because he had seen many times the grandfather or narrator doing this. So he first tested with his hand, then slowly, slowly stepped into the bath, that is bathtub. He stepped first one foot, then the other, until he was into the water up to his neck. Then he rubbed himself till he could reach his hands. Yes, then he was in the water again. He learned all these nicely. That's why he was doing this practically. Another day, Toto got in a large kitchen kettle, which was on fire to boil. Then he enjoyed the warm water. But when the water turned out to be very hot, he started jumping up and down. So suddenly the grandmother mother arrived at that place and saved him. And it was really half boiled. Now, fifth question. Why does the author say Toto was not the sort of pet we could keep for long? Yes, the author is right. The author's statement about Toto is really very, very right. If we take Toto's misdeeds into consideration, yes, then we should not take that. He disturbed all the other animals and he started feeling that they cannot afford likewise creature. And it was very clear Toto was not that sort of pet that they could keep as he created so many losses in the home. Try to check a big list. He peeled off plaster, then tore the blazer of the author, then he teased all the animals, then he threw the pulov at the head of uh, narrator's grandmother then he teased all the guests here or there he created so many problems in the home so it was nice decision to be taken now next question do you have a pet is your pet mischievous yes it is a commonly asked question his personal answer can be if we have pet by chance uh, so we should be very very careful to keep total care of that creature. If we cannot afford the mischievous attitude of one creature, then we do not have any right to keep that pet. Because all the pets are like our family members. They are like children. They need proper love and care. If we have a pet, so it is a nice message to be taken that we have to give quality time to them. Only then we can be real humane. Actually, they make us humane. They make us composed, controlled in our personality. Sometimes by being mischievous. So we have to tolerate their misdeeds. Or we should try to mold them with our love, care and affection.